Venice traffic, Cherokee zero some whiskey, left cross, one runway two three, Venice traffic. Hey guys, John from FlyMikeElf.com, and today I'm here to talk to you about touch and goes. You're probably pretty excited to think about getting into the pattern with your instructor here, and we're going to walk you through all the procedures for flying a normal traffic pattern and how to go through doing a normal touch and go in a Piper Cherokee. Looks good there on the left. We'll go ahead and turn our downwind. Venice traffic, Cherokee zero some whiskey, left downwind, runway 23, Venice traffic. So besides just approaching the airport and entering the pattern as we have been, now we're staying in the traffic pattern and we're going to be configuring the airplane as we normally would a beam our touchdown point. So as I get even with my touchdown point, not even with the end of the runway, but a beam my touchdown point, that could be the thousand foot markers, that could be the numbers, that could be the end of the runway, it could be anything, but a beam the intended point of touchdown, that's when you want to go ahead and start configuring your airplane. And in the Piper Cherokee, we're going to use a simple mnemonic device checklist, which is PPFF, Power Pitch Flaps Fuel Pump. That's the order we're going to do them in. And we're just remembering what numbers we should aim for. So power is coming back to 1700 in here. Then pitch is going to be 80, so we're pitching the airplane for 80 miles per hour and trimming to help us with that. Then flaps to 10, and fuel pump will switch on. And so we're at BMR touchdown point. We'll go ahead and start configuring the airplane. Power back to 1700 here. Pitching for 80 miles per hour. Trimming to help me there. And putting my flaps to 10, fuel pump on, and by this time we're at 1,000 feet, now we're going to start slowly descending down. And we can see our vertical speed going to about minus 500 feet a minute, so we're in a nice 500 foot per minute descent. That's perfect, and we're flying out, and we're, we're flying out, we're going to be aiming for about 45 degrees off our shoulder to the end of the runway to determine when we want to turn our base. So we're on about a half to three quarter mile uh, distance from the runway here. So about three quarters of a mile or a mile away, we're gonna turn our left base. And we're getting towards that point here, so I can go ahead and start turning my left base now. And we'll make that radio call. Venice traffic, Cherokee Zero some Whiskey, left base, runway 23, Venice traffic. Now I'm aiming for a target airspeed this entire time. Very important to maintain airspeed and watch the runway. Those are the two main priorities when you're in the traffic pattern performing touch and goes or low approaches. The runway and the airspeed. Everything looks good here. We'll go ahead and go to 25 degrees of flaps, waiting till I'm wings level to touch flaps, never touching flaps in a turn. So clear on the left, clear on the right. Now, if I determine I'm high, maybe because I have some thermals holding me up, I could go ahead and reduce power. If I determine that I'm low, I could add power in. Power will be for altitude, pitch is going to be for airspeed. So pitch for airspeed, power for altitude, that will not change all the way through the approach. And I want to keep my hand on the throttle, so if you're in the left seat, you'll be keeping your right hand on the throttle all the way down through landing, even after landing. Look one more time, clear on the right, nobody else is on final. Go ahead and start rolling onto my final leg here. Venice traffic, Cherokee zero seven whiskey, final runway two three, touch and go, Venice traffic. So on the final leg, sometimes I'll include that I'm a touch and go, or let everyone know that I'm touch and go traffic instead of a full stop. We're a little high here, so I'll reduce power, try to get back down onto glide slope. We have a little bit of thermals coming off the uh, off the mainland here, holding some in the air. We've got one other aircraft that's crosswind for our runway. We visually check, runway is clear, announce, runway is clear. And it looks good. We got a little bit of right crosswind we can correct for. Short final. We'll go ahead and start putting that crosswind correction in. Left rudder, right wing down. Hey, Cherokee, caution. Uh, we'll helicopter right off the beach. We'll keep an eye out for you. Finish traffic, helicopter 465 Victor Lima is crossing over the uh, center field at this time. Doing the shoreline transition. And now, as we come on to glide slope here, I bumped a little power in because I didn't want to continue to go below glide slope. We have one helicopter at the end of our runway. We'll watch out for on this touch and go here. Might be a good time making a full stop. Looking all the way down the runway. My gaze has continued down the runway. And reducing power to help the airplane come down, maintaining that airspeed just to a few feet off the ground. Now, reducing power and just letting the airplane run out of energy, run out of speed. Right wheel will touch first, and as we touch, rolling all the way over with crosswind correction, following through, gonna go back to 10 degrees of flaps for takeoff, everything's set, gonna go ahead and add in full power as we accelerate. Going to slowly unroll that crosswind correction, check we're clear left and right, 
There's rotation speed, we'll rotate. And now I trimmed nose up back there when I came into land, so I'm gonna have to fight that trim here and maintain VY, 85 miles per hour on climb out, fighting that trim. No need to reach up right now and try to retrim. just keep that hand on the throttle and fly the airplane. Venice traffic, Cherokee Zero Sum Whiskey, upwind runway 23, Venice traffic. That helicopter's passed, no factor. And we never touch flaps below 200 feet. We're above 200, but we've only got 10 flaps in, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave 10 flaps set until we turn left crosswind and we're wings level on the crosswind leg. Now, normally I would wait till 500 feet, but if we're getting far offshore, if we're getting far offshore, then I would go ahead and turn my crosswind leg a little earlier. The aim says to turn crosswind at 700 feet. However, in a lot of these underpowered airplanes, that could take you very far from the airport, and we don't wanna be quite that far offshore. So we're gonna turn a little sooner than that. Venice traffic, Cherokee Zero, some whiskey left crosswind, runway 23, Venice traffic. So we'll roll wings level here, and with wings level, we'll go ahead and get rid of our flaps and turn our fuel pump to off. I'm gonna go ahead and re-enter the downwind. Number eight off of both on the base for runway 23, Venice traffic. Venice traffic, Cherokee Zero, some whiskey left downwind, runway 23, Venice traffic. And I'm watching my altitude here as I come up through 950. I'm going to start thinking about pushing forward and reducing power. Now, when I level off here, I wanted to go no higher than traffic pattern altitude. So there's a thousand feet. I'm going to push forward, reduce power. Most of all, I'm letting the airplane speed up before I reduce power. I don't want to reduce power too early here. I'm really fighting it with pitch. I'm really pushing forward, fighting that trim. And I'm really pushing right now, but I'd rather just keep pushing and fighting the trim rather than having to trim nose down right here and then trim nose up again just in a moment. So power set, airspeed set, cruising along at 1,000 feet. We're midfield left downwind for runway 23. We've got one other airplane on base turning final here. And then we're gonna go ahead and just keep repeating this procedure, practicing our landings. A beam or touchdown point here. I'm gonna go ahead and do PPFF, power back to 1,700. Pitching for 80 miles per hour, just releasing some of that back pressure I'm holding in. The airplane should already be trimmed for 80. Departure to the east. Just watching my nose, not letting the nose pop up above the horizon. Not letting it get too low, that gives me 80, just right there. Now I can let go, we're at 80 miles per hour, flaps coming in, 10 degrees of flaps, fuel pump on, there it is, PPFF, power pitch, flaps, fuel pump. I'm cruising past my touchdown point here, gonna wait till I'm about 45 degrees off my left shoulder, then turn my left base. Starting down in a nice general descent here. And maintaining 80, using pitch to maintain 80 miles per hour. That's the main priority. You may have noticed that RPMs rolled back a little bit. We initially set 1700, and it's rolled back to about 15. That's totally fine. That's intended. We just use 1700 as an initial setting, and then we can make RPM whatever we want to control our altitude along the approach. So if we ever get too low, it doesn't matter. Go full power. If you get way too high, go ahead and go all the way to idle if you have to. Whatever it takes to control the airplane the way you want. For about 45 degrees, we'll go ahead and make our left base turn here. Oh, Seneca. Thanks for stopping. Venice traffic, Cherokee Zero Sun Whiskey, left base, runway 23, Venice traffic. Still holding airspeed all through this turn, not letting the nose get too low or too high. As we roll out here, checking left and right, no other airplanes near us. We'll go ahead and go 25 flaps on base. Finals clear out there, we'll continue on base light, continue our descent. And this time, we know there's some thermals out here holding us up, so I'm gonna reduce power a little bit earlier, try to get on glide slope a little earlier, intercept the glide slope, and follow it in, and I stabilize power on approach. Using 25 flaps, that's pretty standard on a touch and go, unless you uh, get really too high, or you wanna practice some full flap landings, then you could go ahead and use full flaps to bring in some more drag. We're clear on the right, looking good, and we can start turning final here. Venice traffic, Cherokee Zero some Whiskey, turning final, runway 23, Venice traffic. So we are final for runway 23. And Venice traffic, Cessna 17 Yankee, will be a left turn out. Departure to the east, Venice traffic. And now I said turning that time. I don't always say turning final. Usually I just announce final because it's shorter, it's quicker. But I said turning final because we were kind of in that long, slow turn. To let everyone know, hey, I'm wing high right now. And if you're looking for me, you'll notice that I'm an airplane with my wing high. A lot easier to spot that way. We got 25 flaps set, we're right on glide slope. Just gonna leave everything the way it is because we're coming down on glide slope. Don't need more power, don't need any less. If I saw two white lights, I could reduce a little power there. That'll help bring us down more. So we're getting picked up over some of these buildings on the blacktop parking lots. And as we come over the intercoastal, expect some sink. We might go a little bit below glide slope here. And same thing as before. As we get closer, I'm gonna use some left rudder, straighten up my nose, some right wing down. We got a little bit of right cross one coming here. And we're just making this a touch and go. It's gonna be right wheel first following through with the landing, ending it all the way over. 
As soon as I feel the wheel contact, I make sure the power is all the way back to idle. And then as we're rolling out, I'll set flaps and add full power to take off again. Using power to make a nice stable approach all the way to the ground, nice and slow descent rate. Not getting fast, not getting slow. Now that I'm in ground effect, reducing power, pulling it all the way back, just holding the airplane off to run out of energy in ground effect here. And a little bit of wind there. Right wheel first, left wheel, nose wheel. And rolling all the way over, following through with that, setting flaps, and we're gonna go ahead and depart. As I pick up speed, rolling out that crosswind correction, checking clear left and right as we cross the runway. There's rotation speed, rotating, and fighting that trim as we accelerate to VY. Don't let the airplane get slow here. There is such thing as a trim stall, they talk about. Airplanes going into a power on stall because of trim. You really have to fight it and keep the airplane at VY. Venice traffic, Cherokee zero, some whiskey, upwind runway, two, three, Venice traffic. Now I'm making the upwind call here because the last call I made was over a minute ago back on final. So it's a long time to be flying around the airport without making any traffic calls. So I like to make that traffic call upwind when I'm staying in the pattern, unless you're too busy. That's okay. It's not a required call. Actually, none of these are required calls in the traffic pattern, but it's a good habit to be in to let other airplanes know where you're at. Now, 400 feet, I'm going to start making that turn. Didn't wait till 500 or 700 because we're getting too far offshore here. Venice traffic, Cherokee 0 so whiskey, left crosswind, runway 23, Venice traffic. And once I get wings level on crosswind here, we'll go ahead and get rid of my flaps and get rid of the fuel pump. Retract flaps, fuel pump off. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching, and thank you so much for sharing us on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media sites. If you have any questions about the video at all, just leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on our video, and you can subscribe to us to keep up with all our latest episodes right over here on the right. Also, check out some of these other helpful videos below, and remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you all next time.